All right, the number one rule in home repair is safety. We're gonna rewire a major appliance. We gotta cut the electricity off, all right? Come on out here. There. That is the fuse box. The electrical nerve center of our house. Wow. You're darn right, Wow. Well. <laughs> but now, we don't have to cut off all the electricity, just the section of the house we're working on. That'd be the kitchen up there. Uh, kitchen. <laughs> well, I shouldn't have labeled those in pencil, should I? <laughs> They're all faded and everything. Look. Well, kitchen's K. Yeah, that's kitchen. There we go. All right, Hank, the handyman. Come on, let's go. We got to take off that access panel. All right. Whoa. Look at all the wires in there. Do you know what all those wires do? Yeah, of course. I wouldn't have taken it off if I didn't. Ground. We're looking to ground. Now, red is all red. Yellow, see? The sun is yellow. It heats the ground. That's how they name stuff. <laughs> Shake it off. Are you all right, Dad? Yeah. I, I did that to teach you an important lesson. What is that, Dad? Well, when you work with electricity, it's a good idea to shut it all off. Now... Follow me upstairs, I'll show you to treat a severe electrical burn. The power heartbeat of your home, the electrical panel. Now, the electrical panel has gone through a lot of changes over time, and um, some for the better and some not for the better. Now, as far as these electrical panels, um, the last 100 years has been a kind of a rocky road as far as some of these panels go. Some of the manufacturers that have been making them for a long time are still making them today, like Eaton and Square D. Obviously, when you're developing technology, especially safety technology, it's very important that when it comes to the uh, electrical systems in our home, that they be safe and they function properly because when they don't the results can be catastrophic while ingenuity in general can be very very good for not only us as people but for our country and things like that um, sometimes ingenuity can lead to advancements that are not necessarily good and sometimes it can take a while to show their true colors as to the true detriment of the problems that they're having now when it comes to electrical panels the uh, main offenders that we're looking at are going to be federal pacific um, Federal Pacific is a type of uh, panel, sometimes known as Stablock, that has a lot of uh, history with fires and, and electrical fires and electrical hazards. Um, the other one is going to be Zinsco GTE Sylvania. Both companies uh, basically just change names, but they keep kept manufacturing the same type of technology. Um, they also had a lot of fire issues, electrical safety hazards, breakers that were not functioning, those types of things. Now, these two panels, without a doubt, need to be replaced in your home immediately. They are an immediate fire hazard, all right? The other panels, I still would suggest replacing them. They don't have as checkered of a safety past or safety record, um, but they do have noted problems that need to be um, corrected. Now, sometimes you can correct this by replacing breakers and things like that with some newer updated technology that will fill that gap. Um, but you're still talking about an old connection that has corrosion on it and other types of things. Um, it's just always better when you have one of these older panels to look at full panel replacement. Now, a full-on panel swap where you take the electrical panel out and you put a new electrical panel in, um, in today's uh, market, anywhere from $1,500 to $2,000. I mean, these guys are making a lot of money. They're very skilled contractors, and uh, it's not something for your average homeowner to mess around with. If, if you as a homeowner go and mess around with it, your screwdriver touches the wrong thing, you're having a really bad day. Um, and uh, want to make sure that you're safe. So definitely some, not a job for your uh, average homeowner to try to tackle. Um, I always say there are two things that homeowners should not mess with. One is electricity and two is gas. If, you're, if you screw up putting your toilet in, nobody's going to die, okay? However, 
you screw up putting a gas line in or screw up putting your electrical in, you could burn on your house, you could kill yourself, you could kill somebody else. Definitely not something to mess around with. So, um, like I said, um, you know, hire the professional, hire an elect electrician to come in and do that panel swap for you. Um, they basically are going to take the all wires off of all the breakers. They're going to take the panel off the wall. They're going to hang a new panel on the wall, and then they're going to uh, reconnect all those um, wires up to new breakers. Now. In doing this, the old panels you usually didn't have many openings and stuff. So by doing this, not only are you going to update your panel, make it more safe, um, but you're also going to probably have more availability for any type of circuits that you would need to add in the future. Let's talk about um, four different types of panels that you should try to avoid having in your home. If they exist in your home, you're going to want to get them changed. Now with Federal Pacific, they got their first patent in 1949. And in 1963, the stab lock breaker was patented. The stab lock breaker has been known to be the one that has all the issues, okay? And the stab lock breaker, basically it had poor connection to the bus bar. They switched over and were using different types of bus bar building materials. The contact points were not connecting properly. The breakers were not tripping off at their um, suggested load. Um, so when a, uh, a breaker is supposed to be tripping, yeah, that is something that should be happening at a designed rating. And if it's not, then that breaker can be overloaded and you run the risk of developing a fire or an electrical hazard. Now, the thing with Stablock is that Stablock, they got a patent for the Stablock breakers in 1963, um, and it was a UL-listed product. Now, UL listings, basically, the UL is going to come in and say, hey, um, your product is, uh, the product testing methods are safe as we as they see them that day. They will come in and check that stuff periodically, um, but these UL listings are basically seen as a safety rating. Um, however, um, it's over time, the UL listing for Stablock breakers was removed, yeah, Yet stab lock breakers kept being produced because um, basically they created all the manufacturing and they didn't want to try to recreate the manufacturing. They still continued to produce them even though they knew that the breakers were not functioning properly and then they still kept installing them in homes. And that's where we come into some of these real problems. Now, in 1984, the Consumer Protection Safety Commission, they basically determined that 60% of the stab lock breakers that were being installed in homes brand new, already installed, lots of different types were tested, and 60% of them did not function like they're intended to. And that's a problem. So all those, uh, basically, they should have been stopped being made right away, um, but they they weren't. They, they kept making them and stuff, and they really needed to stop that process. Now, in uh, 2002, um, Stablock or um, Federal Pacific was found guilty of producing breakers that were banned or claimed false listings. Now, that basically means that they were claiming a list or like a UL listing that they did not have or did not have the rights to or they made up their own, you know, um, and gave a false sense of safety and security to the purchasers of that product, all right? And so then uh, basically there was some lawsuits and a bunch of uh, stuff happened, but I don't think there was ever a uh, uh, overall recall on the product, which there probably should have been. Um, there probably, my, my guess is there wasn't any money to do it, but who knows, you know? And then when it comes to Federal Pacific, when you see those breakers, sometimes as a home inspector, if we were to take this panel off, the breakers could fall right out on us and they might pop right off and that's just not acceptable. So um, ultimately, federal specific um, stab lock breakers in a home need to be removed. It will be identified as a major or adverse defect of the home and should be removed immediately. So when you're looking for these panels, Federal Pacific is gonna usually have an orange and silver tag. If you see that tag on the electrical panel, that is a Federal Pacific or stab lock panel and it should be replaced immediately. Now, as far as the second worst panel to get um, or to come across is gonna be a Zinsco. Now, Zinsco, um, they've gone over a number of different names as the company changed hands. We had Zinsco, we had GTE Sylvania, we had uh, Challenger all the same company. It just went through different iterations uh, throughout time. Generally, as a company, Zinsco was started in the 1930s. I believe it was a father and son team. Um, but, uh, you know, obviously, as large companies go through things, um, they get bought and sold a number of times, and that's where these other names um, come in. But they basically used a copper bus bar and copper breaker clips. Um, they had a high breaker fail rate. Um, they also had a lot of overheating, bus bar connection issues, and that kind of stuff. The loose breakers would fall out of the panel. Um, sometimes when you see Zinsco panels, they'll be actually oriented horizontally and stuff. Um, and uh, they're just 
not good panels. You know, we don't want breakers that are loose or anything like that because that's going to lead to a risk of electrical shock, but also a um, risk of electrical fire. If you're looking at the GE, GTE Zinsco panel, lots of times this is going to be more easily indicated by the style of breaker. The thing with Zinsco, their label changed frequently, so the label may not um, be as good of an indicator as um, the type of breaker that you're looking at. Now, one of the biggest issue with a lot of these um, electrical panels um, is the connection between a breaker and the bus bar. Now, when we talk about, um, and, and we mentioned it when we were talking about the Federal Pacific uh, panel, when we talk about um, bus bars, okay, um, the bus bar is actually this um, piece or section in the middle here um, where the electricity flows. So your main wires come into your main breaker, which today your main breaker should be factory installed. It should never have been removed. Um, and that is gonna basically electrify this bus bar. All right. Now, if you turn, the, if you have wire going in here, you have your break, your main breaker in the off position. Um, there's not going to be any power going to this bus bar, which is the safest way to install breakers and stuff. Now, when it comes to your bus bar, um, today we make them commonly out of aluminum, which is fine. It's just that the aluminum can over time corrode and needs to be replaced. Um, they also have used copper in the past. Copper does corrode as well, um, but not quite as quickly or aggressively as aluminum does. Um, but either way, we want to make sure we have good strong connections at this bus bar because that's where that uh, high load of electricity is coming from um, and we want to make sure we have good connections there so when we have poor connections well that becomes a problem all right um, now when it comes to the other breaker panels um, the uh, the push manic and the uh, Wadsworth um, you know those are both just very old panels. And when we talk about a technology getting old like that, um, it has a higher greater chance that it's going to malfunction. And when higher greater chance of malfunction is in coordination with us, an electrical system, you wanna replace that because there's fire risk and electrical hazard risk. So we wanna make sure that those panels get replaced as well. They're outdated, they're unsafe, and they should be replaced. Now, as far as these panels go, they should, uh, cost-wise, will be no different from the other ones. Um, it's basically just, again, disconnecting those wires, putting a new panel on the wall, and rehooking up the wires to your existing breakers. Um, the Pushmatic panel may also be listed as a bulldog. So Pushmatic was the original iteration, and then they had the bulldog uh, title on there. So you may see the tag with either uh, Pushmatic or bulldog listed on the top of that of the panel. And it's going to be usually a blue and silver tag. Um, and it's going to be indicated by these push button breakers. So they're breakers that you would push in and push out, um, just like you would to um, you know pop open a cabinet door or something like that. Okay, is what it's going to feel like. Um, but just that push button action it just didn't hold up over time and it's something that should be replaced as it can malfunction wadsworth is usually going to be a tag that's got a, a set of wings on it usually and then it's going to say wadsworth underneath it it's usually on the very front cover of the, the electrical panel and can be very easily identified if you're ever working on the electrical system in your home you always want to make sure that the power is off to the area you can get an electrical sniffer, which will determine if there's power to the area. That's one step. You also want to make sure the breaker is off in the area. You should have absolutely no power there um, because any uh, contact with you, even one milliamp of electricity across your heart can cause a heart arrhythmia and could cause death. Along with your panel swap, when you put the new electrical panel up, is you're gonna to get to use some of the more advanced technology that we have available to us in electrical safety. So this is an example of an AFCI breaker. So the AFCI breaker has, if I can get it to zoom in there, it has that little button there where it says test. And basically what that's gonna allow you to do is test an arc fault circuit interruption. So basically if, um, what's an arc fault circuit? So basically if uh, you were put hanging a picture on the wall and you pounded a nail through the wall and that nail accidentally pierced the wire behind the wall that you couldn't see, okay? Um, this would detect it, it would trip off, okay? Even though the light that that hooks, wire hooks up to is still gonna work, the outlets are still gonna work, but now you have an electrified nail that's in there and you have a break in the wire connection, which is gonna basically be arcing all the time. It's gonna have a little bit of uh, electrons jumping over that little gap that was created by the nail poking into the wire. So arc fault circuit interrupters, they basically, uh, they started out with requiring these in just your bedrooms and uh, then they moved into living rooms. Now they basically want arc fault circuit interrupters in your entire panel. The only downside to arc fault circuit interrupters, these breakers, they're um, very expensive. So you're looking at probably a 
20 to $30 breaker every time you got to replace one. Um, so very expensive to install. Uh, manufacturers of these units will generally say, test them once a month. Um, and I would say, eh, I wouldn't worry about that. I would test them once every six months because if we test this thing once every month, this eventually is gonna wear this system out and it's gonna require premature failure and require replacement. Um, so I would say test once every six months. So when we talk about um, maintenance in your home, uh, generally, I like to say, hey, fall and spring. So Halloween and Easter are two great times to do maintenance in your home. And that would be really when you want to go down and check those AFCI breakers that would be in your electrical panel. Generally, if you go into the basement and you see an old panel, plan on replacing it. Replacement of your electrical panel should always only be done by a proper qualified and licensed electrician. If your screwdriver touches the wrong thing in this electrical panel, you're having a really bad day. Hey gang, Matt the Helpful Home Inspector here. Thanks again for tuning in today. I really appreciate you. If you wouldn't mind hitting the subscribe button down below, the bell notification over there will make you aware of new content we got coming out. Thumbs up if you liked the video and give me a comment down below on something you'd like to learn about. Thanks again for tuning in, you guys. Remember, the better you take care of your house, the better it'll take care of you.